Hello, my name is Josefine Seifert. I'm from SQL Stack, and our work mainly focuses on security on the infrastructure as a service level. And there we search for some security features everywhere. And on OpenStack, we found a gem, multi-factor authentication. And it's a little bit um, sparsely documented. That's why I wanted to tell you today how to use multi-factor authentication in OpenStack Keystone. And we will start with a recap of how authentication in Keystone works. After that, I will come to the state of the multi-factor authentication in Keystone. And I will show you how to configure it M of A and how the usage workflow is. And after this theory, we come to a demo video, or better, two demo videos, so I can show you how this works in real time. And after that, I have a conclusion. And as you see, um, I will mainly focus on shortcomings because um, the good feature is there is M of A in Keystone. So let's start with how does authentication in Keystone works. So when a user normally authenticates, they're using their specific username and their password, or they use LEAP as a login. And then Keystone issues a time-limited token for them. And this token um, is used by other services, as you can see down there, to authenticate the user. That means if a user wants to create a new server, the user first goes to Keystone, authenticates themselves, gets a token, and with that token, then the user goes to Nova and says, hey, here you have a token, please create a VM. Nova is then checking with Keystone, hey, is this token valid? Is that user authenticated? And if Keystone says yes, then Nova creates the VM. And this may also be more, may already sound a little bit difficult to some of you, but OpenStack client and all the dashboards usually handle this process for you. So what is different in multi-factor authentication? Um, first, that there's not much documentation about it, so you have uh, a lot to find out for yourself, and that it's only implemented in the API. So you cannot just go to Horizon or Skyline or in the OpenStack client and type in you want to use M of A. It just doesn't work. There are APIs for the admin for setting all the M of A settings necessary, and for the user to use this MFA for authentication. And you see right there, the sequence diagram didn't really change. It's just, um, in theory, just one more step. Um, how this is handled in the back end is that Keystone has user objects, and those user objects have MFA-related properties that enable MFA for each user, so that's user-specific. And also the combinations of um, authentication factor, can, you can set that per user. Um, you can configure Keystone with TOTP. TOTP means time-based one-time password, and it's commonly used, for example, in the Google Authenticator and the things you have to do as an administrator to set up um, MFA is just at first to adjust the config one time that can be done when you deploy a cloud and you add in the auth matters next to password and token, which is already there, TOTP. Then, and that has to be repeated for every Keystone user who would like to use MFA the administrator had to set, has to set those properties via v3 users API, um, multi-factor multi auth enabled and multi-factor auth rules. You will see that later. Then the administrator had, has to register the TOTP shared secret for the users via the credentials API. 
and generate a URI and QR code so the user can register with an OTP app. And here you can see it as an admin. At first you have to enable MFA for the Keystone users and set the rules. Then you create the secret and share it for the user. Provide a, an URI including that shared secret and that may be as a QR code. You will see that in our demo. After that, the user can register the QR code and use the special authentication workflow on the CLI. Sounds pretty nice, sounds pretty easy. Um, we will get through this in the demo. You just see green text as commentary, the yellow lines are the comments which are executed and the white lines is the output. And start with moment. Yep. Start with first one and So first one, we follow the administrator um, administrator row. We source our admin credentials, as you can see. So we are really our administrator. Then we create a project and a user for the demo purposes. There you can see normal project creation and user creation that's not recommended by the way to just type in the password like this this is just for demo uh, purposes because we will use that password later and you will recognize it now we um, add a role so the user can use the his project and we save the user ID. That was the easy part. <laughs> now we will um, go in to the API calls and I will guide you through this. First of all, we export the auth token we get as a administrator because we need to provide it for the API call. There is the token. And we go to the user's API from that specific user. And we set multi-factor of enabled to true. And we add the multi-factor auth rules. As you can see here, this is um, a set of rules and it can be even more, it can be other things. But um, for this user, we chose that the, um, that the user has to log in with a password and with TOTP. Now, um, we want to give the user access to the TATP or make it usable. And um, 
therefore we have to create a shared secret which we which we will make available for the user so to the user's app we um, create it here and we register it into Keystone again um, for every API command you need to provide a token so we issue a new token here and do the API request there have you there we have our shared secret and we set the type of the secret it's TOTP and we also said the user um, here, you here you can recognize is the user ID we saved from the beginning where we created the user. Now OpenStack knows um, that shared secret. Now we have to make it available for the user also. So both ends know what the shared secret is and therefore we will generate uh, the required OTP URI. There it is. <laughs> and we used a QRAN code to tr transform this URI into a QR code, which will be done next. And now that was the part of the administrator. So as you can see that admin has a lot of stuff to do, a lot of API calls to do, and that for each user. Now, I don't think that would work. <laughs> <clears throat> now, the user can approach this and use this QR code to um, register. And as you can see here, we have done this. As you can see, the username is mfa minus user at sequelstack.com. That was the username we registered. Um, it, it was issued from Keystone and there we have everything. Wonderful. That was only part one because um, now the user has to actually work and authenticate with MFA every time. And how that feels like, I will show you in the next video. So, first of all, our user wants to just um, show his own user site. Um, or if the user would just want to create a server, they would fire a normal OpenStack um, command using OpenRC. But um, that won't work when MFA is enabled. And instead, there will be an error message. Because um, as you can read it, not all <coughs> authentication methods were satisfied. And now we have a two-step process to use um, TOTP with the OpenStack client. Um, first, as you can see here, we have to set some variables like in the OpenRC file for authentication. So you set the username, project name, the auth URL, where Keystone is, and we read the password, so that's the password from before. From before, we type it in, and now we need to acquire the TOTP passcode using the mobile device. We start our app. There we get our one-time password. 
tap it in. And now we can craft an API request to get the actual token. And yeah, the, the request for the post to v3 auth tokens is a little bit um, big, so we just have all the um, important lines here for M of A. So we want to issue a token for identity and we use the methods, as you can see, password on TOTP. Then the password is just the user, the username, the password. And for TOTP, we also have the username and there is the passcode that we generated. And as you can see, there's much more in this request, which uh, needs to be provided, but we cut it out here for better readability. Now we get back uh, a response and that carries the authentication token. And there it is, we can export this token and use it. Such tokens in Keystone at default have a lifespan of one hour, so you can for one hour use such a token to identify yourself against any OpenStack um, yeah, servers. After that, you would need a new token. But how to use that token in the OpenStack client? That's the next step. That means in the end we have to switch from the normal OpenRC um, and password-based authentication to token-based authentication for the rest of the session. Um, we are unsetting a few um, things here that we don't need anymore, but we still need all the interfa interface and the auth type and the other variables like project name and project name are still active and as you can see here that are our local variables. And now we can issue OpenStack client commands after having this. Yay, it worked. <laughs> so, as you can see, this is a little bit um, difficult for a user to fire API requests. The good thing is that it can be automated in scripts and we have done this also with scripts. Again, um, we are in this session again at the beginning and we have a not yet MFA authenticated user. And the first script is just for the token retrieval where we enter our password, where we enter the TOTP authentication code. And we get back our token way faster, as you can see. And does not require handling API requests on a command line. The second script is just um, another OpenLC, which is MFA user, which uses token-based authentication, and that will just act like a normal OpenLC file. And if you saw that, yeah, then you can use it as shown. As you have seen in this um, demos, there are a few downsides to this. And 
the first of all is that, yeah, why am I doing this on console? Why am I not showing you a fancy dashboard and doing this? Yeah, there's no dashboard integration. You don't have anything um, in Horizon or Skyline or any other thing as far as I know. So if you activate MFA for a user, that will definitely lock them out of every dashboard. So the user is forced to use the OpenStack client. But even if the user wants to use the OpenStack client, there's no proper CLI integration, unfortunately. And in the demo, you could see there's a lot of fiddling with variables or scripting for the user and a lot of API requests that an administrator has to fill out. And when the token expires after the default over one hour, for example, then you even get a bad user experience. Just you, the former comment did work. You've, for example, created a VM. Everything works. Now you wanted to show, make a show on the VM, and you get the request you've made requires authentication. You might think you're still authenticated because you have a token, but it is not valid anymore. That's the problem. It's um, not pretty clear what's up to the user. But the biggest thing, the biggest um, problem we see here overall is that there's no self-service for the users. So there has to always be an administrator involved to create the shared secret, to, to register it, or to um, set the methods for authentication for each user. And the user has no insights about registered devices or um, the history. And another open question to conclude is, um, we just created a shared secret and um, build a QR code from it, but how to securely handle this? I mean, we're talking about security if we are talking about MFA. So how to securely handle and transmit the shared secret? Um, for example, web portals usually display uh, such a QR code via HTTPS. And this is just up to the administrator. Um, these are some things we just wanted to put in here and give you a short overview over um, multi-factor authentication um, in Keystone and how it currently worked. And if you want to try it for yourself, there's a guide. Um, I put also the scripts online so you can follow it like a tutorial and try it for yourself. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. <laughs> okay. Thank you very well first. Can you can you use the mic? <laughs> um yeah, thanks for the uh, walk through through the complex process. Indeed, it is. Um, but I wonder why didn't you use uh, the functionality that is already built in, into OpenStack uh, um, in the CLI? Most of uh, the stuff that you explained, at least for the user side, is already uh, built in there. Did you know? For which release? So if you want to actually um, uh, authenticate with uh, TOTP and um, or with, with two factors, whatever uh, you want to use, um, passing, for example, the passcode uh, and retrieving the um, token itself is all built in into the normal vanilla OpenStack client, at least since uh, OpenStack SDK 1.0, but I'm pretty sure okay. uh, that way was <laughs> uh, 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 longer. So uh, why did you use the, the shell scripts? Was it difficult to figure out how to, to use this functionality? Um, as a first step, there's no documentation. We found this um, gem uh, years ago and always wanted to have a presentation about this. And 
at the OpenStack Summit and we tried this again and there was no new documentation about it. So if you say that it's new in OpenStack SDK 1.0.0, there's no documentation about it. I'm pretty sure there is some documentation, but it's not, not it's no good uh, documentation. I agree to that, but well, what I just wanted to say, it's all uh, uh, built in already and uh, you can shortcut a lot of um, what you, you're shown here. Uh, with your, especially with the shell scripts that you uh, provided. So that would be new to me. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah, uh, thanks anyway. <laughs> Great presentation, by the way. A lot to learn. Um, in terms of self-service, is there any plans to automate this so user can help themselves by running, say if you, you implement in UI, you run the script, but user kind of becomes half the admin when they pr provision it themselves. Is there any work going on towards that? Um, not, it's not planned from our side. It's just we wanted to just um, yeah, focus on the MFA and show that there's the feature like you have multi-factor authentication and Keystone. And we wanted to highlight also a few downsides. And maybe if uh, you say it's already in SDK, maybe they are already um, working on it. And the other thing with the authenticator app, is it possible to integrate with a phone call or text message as well? There's functionality like that too. It just depends on the provider how that part could work because some authenticators, they have an option to send a text or authenticate by a phone call like six digit code, things like that? Um, I only know about um, the this way, part. so. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for the presentations. The, I want to ask about the integration between the multi-factor authentication and the SAML protocol support in the Keystone. So actually, we are using SAML protocol support in Keystone in our dashboard. So is it possible to utilize the multi-factor authentication with our dashboard using the SAML protocol? Um, I don't know much about that protocol, so I cannot answer that question, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your attention and have a nice summer day. <laughs>